Hello Cheapskaters, I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first visit to our channel, welcome, and if it's not, welcome back. Today, I'm going to talk about card making. Uh, if you're a long-time subscriber to our channel, or you've been a member of the Cheapskates Club for a while, you'll know that I love card making. I've actually been doing it for about 34 years. I was thinking about it this morning. I thought, now when did I start? Oh, the Christmas after we got married. I started card making 34 years ago. Oh, it's a long time. But I do cards on a budget. I do cards on a budget because I don't have a big craft budget. But I do cards on a budget because I do a lot of cards every year. I use a lot of the cards that I make. But we don't know that many people that we give birthday cards or wedding cards, Christmas cards, Easter cards, anniversary cards, whatever cards to. So the cards I make, most of them, go to charity. Keeps my fingers busy, keeps my mind busy. And they serve a good purpose. So I thought I'd share with you some ways you can get started card making on a budget because it can be really overwhelming when you look at the videos on youtube or you go to pinterest or you go to some websites and they have people have brand name everything and or um particular things and you just know they cost a fortune and it can be very demoralizing if you think that you can't afford to make cards you can and here's how we're going to do it now I'm just going to tip you down so that you can see what I've got on my table in front of me here and hopefully it'll inspire you now if you have any questions great I love questions just pop them in the comments below me um, I read all the comments and I'll do my best to answer your questions in a timely fashion <laughs> Uh, depending on when they pop up. Okay, I'm just going to tilt you down. So close your eyes if you get seasick. There we go. Laptop out of the way. All right, now on my table, I have cutting mats. I have a big grey one and I have this blue one. Let me clear some stuff off it. Ta -da, ta -da. Okay, this blue one is, oh, there's two. Look at that. I can show you a blue and a green and a grey. Oh, colours. Now, I use the big one. It sits on my table all the time now. It was a hefty investment of about $35. Got it from Officeworks. But it means I can spread out. Before that, though, I used these. So this is roughly 45 centimetres by about 30 centimetres in a rectangle, marked in grids. Now, the grids come in handy and I do use them, but I use it mostly for actually cutting on and gluing on and putting my card on to protect my work surface, my table, which is here. That's the main thing I use um, my cutting mats for these days because I have a paper trimmer. Before I had the paper trimmer, to cut card to size or to cut paper to size, I had one of these handy dandy things. This is a ruler and... It has both inches and millimetres on it and a cutting blade. And I could just, well, I need a piece of paper and I'm about to cut one. So here we go. I'll show you how it works. Excuse the cellophane noise. No, I like this colour better. I'll talk more about papers. So I would line my paper up on the grid and I would measure out where I wanted it 
how many centimeters? Three, two, might do three centimeter strips because it's uh, right, and you just go and it cuts, and you get a nice clean cut on your paper. Now you can do the same thing with scissors. You don't need one of these, but it sure makes life easier. This one I have had for a gazillion years. And it either came from the reject shop or Kmart. I've had it so long I can't remember. But it wasn't expensive. It was around the $2, $2.50 mark when I bought it. And I think they're pretty much around the same price still. You'll get them at um, $2 shops and cheap shops, discount shops will have them. Makes life so much easier. So a good cutting mat and a paper trimmer, if you um, can get one, just makes making cards that much easier. The next thing I have is scissors. Now, I like scissors with a point. These have a really good point on them. Can you see? Really good point. Just means that you can get right into, if you're trimming out corners, really well. And they come in handy because if you don't have a paper trimmer, you've got a ruler. You have a ruler, a pencil, draw your line, use your scissors to cut so much easier and you don't need fancy schmancy things now I suppose we should talk about cards we've got this far we should talk about the cards you can make your own card bases if you want to but if you are just beginning and you're not sure that you're going to enjoy card making or you only make a few cards each year I recommend these now we call these Kmart cards because you'll never guess where you get them. Kmart. Pack of 25 cards with envelopes, $3.25. That makes a card and envelope just 13 cents. Now you can make your own cards if you want to from cardstock, but you would then need to have to buy an envelope or make an envelope cardstock is more from an a4 sheet of cardstock i've got cardstock here can you see um from an a4 sheet of cardstock you'll get two two standard cards okay but your sheets of cardstock are more than 26 cents so if you want cheap cheap cards these are a good base and they're great for beginners to start with. So that's those. If you've got those things, the only other things you really need is some sort of adhesive um, and a stamp. Now I've got this stamp here, this little stamp. It says, can you see? says happy birthday happy happy birthday it's a lovely little stamp when i was starting out i had one stamp that said happy birthday one stamp that said merry christmas and that was it i had one ink pad and i would suggest if you are just starting out that one ink pad is plenty and go for black because black goes with everything well black ink goes with everything so you can use it to stamp your embellishments, your sentiments, whatever. A black ink pad. I will say, if you can save up to get a good ink pad, let me just see if I can reach one. I think it was on that. There we go. If you can save up to get a quality ink pad, it's worth doing. Now, this is Hannah's because she's probably got mine. My very first quality ink pad was a Stampin' Up! one. But it was second hand and I only paid $5 for it. 
at a secondhand swap meet thing. There are places online, Facebook groups, where you can buy and swap card making supplies. There are some specific to Stampin' Up! products. Not cheap if you have to buy it new. It's not cheap if you have to buy it new. But my Mossy Meadow, which is a really nice green, and it's sort of colour that's quite neutral, really, I bought for $5. And it would be at least six years ago, and I am still using it. It was secondhand when I bought it. Quality ink pads are worth the money if you can wait and save up to get them. They are not cheap. They run anything from $13 up, depending on what you buy. But if you can't afford anything else, basic black. Like a little black dress, a little black stamp pad will cover all occasions. Adhesives. Um, the three that I like, double-sided tape nice and strong works really well these are from Kmart two rolls two dollars 20 meters to a roll I've not had a failure with these yet works really well I just dropped something let me pop down and pick it up oh that was it okay or you can use a trusty tape runner again these all come from discount stores I don't buy brand names in these things. I don't, for these particular items, I don't think it's worth it. I should have taken this out earlier, shouldn't I? But just a tape runner. These are refillable. So your initial one might cost you $2.99, but you'll get two refills for the same price. Tape runners um, just make sticking things easier for you. That's all. Very inexpensive too. But if you prefer a liquid glue, and most of the time for card making I do, the one that I use and recommend is Art Glitter Glue. Again, it is not cheap. It's about $8 for that little bottle. But you'll notice I have a stainless steel. Now I've taken it off and I can't. Put it back on stainless steel nozzle that fits over the tip it is really fine really 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 fine can you see tiny tiny little thing with a little stainless pen that goes in it to stop it from drying out it leads out the tiniest little line of glue i fill this bottle up once every seven or eight months with glue. The initial outlay costs a fortune, was very expensive, but it just goes and goes and goes and goes. And again, it's very strong. Wayne and Alan have actually switched to using Art Glitter Glue for their trains, when they're modelling trains. So last year they both got some in their Christmas stockings. It's really good. Now, this isn't from a discount store. It's not from the reject shop or a $2 shop or Kmart. You will need to find a craft shop, um, card making shop, a scrapbooking shop, somewhere like that. You can buy it online from Bev's Cross Crafts in um, Tasmania. You can get it here in Melbourne from Creative Dreams in Baronia. Sometimes you'll see it at a craft fair, but it is well worth the money, really and truly worth the money. Lots of people use Tombow, other glues like that, art glitter glue. It glues just about anything too. You can glue paper to paper, felt to paper, cotton to paper, tin foil to paper. It's great for gluing um, foam um foam backed glitter paper to your cards all sorts of things so that's my one if I was going to say unbudget friendly craft supply it's art glitter glue another tool that's really handy to have is a good old bone folder 
that we're talking about these at cards on on saturday and this just came from the two dollar shop and i think they were two for two dollars when we got them it's really good for creasing lines in your card if you need to um, make a nice crease and you want it to be nice and crisp you use your bone folder and it makes a really nice sharp crease so that your paper or your card will sit flat works really really well pop dots we call these pop dots um, some people call them dimensionals they're little double-sided sticky foam bits for giving your cards a 3d effect pop them on the back of an embellishment what have i done they stuck them together pop them on the back of an embellishment or whatever now i get these in packets of 1000 for two dollars 20 from arthur daly's which is a discount store locally to me not too far away any two dollar shop the reject shop kmart sell them i don't know about big w because i don't shop at big w so i can't help you with that riot art and craft but you will pay a bit more but any craft shop will have some form of pop dot um, dimensional whatever they want to call them that's about it seriously folks you can craft on a budget and make a card on a budget and it won't cost much at all in fact let's just do a card just to prove i've got some paper here but you get a card out and get because i'll use these up this week so we get a card so there's two cards there a card and the envelope I like to trim the envelope if I can. Okay, a really simple card is something like, this is double-sided paper, so it's going to work really well. So I'm going to cut um, three strips, and they're going to be, where did I put my slice? Here it is right here. Three strips, and they're going to be two centimetres wide each. Line it up one. Not to cut all the way through, but that's easy to fix because you snip it. Um, I have to tell you, one of the funniest things when I was trying to make a card with um, a friend a few years ago, and we watched the video so that we would know how to do it, and then we printed out the instructions and we followed them to a T and the darn thing did not work. Just did not work. No, why? What have we done? We gave up. We each of us made two the same. And then we gave up. And then this. Nope. But it might fit there. Nope. Okay. We'll do a fourth one. Just because I can. So I'll do the inside of the card too. I like to decorate the inside of the card. And if I can, I'll decorate the um, envelope. Just because it's nice. Now, we call these strip cards. Hmm. Why? Because they're made from paper strips. So you've got your card. What I'm going to do is I like this pattern. So I'm going to reverse it like so. Put three down, see how I go. Now, this is where the grid on your cutting mat comes in really handy. You need to sort of, I, I eyeball it, guys. I don't measure it. Maybe I should, but I eyeball it. Um, that looks about right equal distance of white top and bottom get my glue trusty glue and i'll do one with glue to show you and we're just going to do a really skinny 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 not going to come out why won't it come out it won't come out because i'm using it 
let's try this this one you will see how much comes out you need a tiny little bit yeah that's huge teeny tiny little bit because it's liquid don't put it right up to the edge it will squish so you got a little tiny bit and it is going your strips are a bit longer than your card and that's fine we will fix that in a minute okay double-sided tape where are you let's go double-sided tape for the middle bit we'll just use different adhesives and see how they work Tape. stuff rips really well you don't need anything in particular I do if you're using double-sided tape find it much easier to remove the backing if you just burnish it it just peels off that's gonna have to go there isn't it so yeah, let's put that there and we'll put that one oh, line up that one there because I put the tape on the wrong side perfect so this one can get tape runner on it and tape runner is simply with this and this and this that's how you use your tape runner anyone that's done scrapbooking will know how to use these things and there you go okay now it is hanging off so flip it over get your handy dandy scissors and trim them off that's what the lady said with the card that pamela and i were trying to make if you've got any bits that don't fit just trim them off cut them off we tried and tried and tried to get that card to work and it wouldn't okay that's card front done card front done just like that how easy was that now stamp Peel it off the back. Do I have a stamp block here somewhere? Do I have a punch here somewhere? I wasn't planning on making a card. So I'm going to punch, but we'll try this. Okay. Ink up your stamp. Find a piece of... I haven't got a piece of green paper. Oh, I've got a piece of white. No, but I will do this. Okay. You can always improvise in card making. I do it all the time. Make it your own. So I'm going to push it back. Ah, do you want to do that anyway? That will teach me to be more prepared, would not it? that there like that oh that's not too bad happy with that put the lid back on your ink pad because otherwise you will spill it everywhere do i have oh i don't I do what can I use okay all right we're going to cut it out Get your handy dandy scissors and I'm going to fussy cut the circle when you're fussy cutting put your paper in the scissors and turn the paper, not the scissor or scissors. So much easier. Right. And then we will get a yep. Alright, so that's a oh, okay, that'll work. Cut that into a square. Got that strip beauty. Uh, trim it off. Now, 
sorry about that guys let's get some dimensionals and we'll pop them on the back of this because everything needs dimension now i'm always generous with the dimensionals a thousand for two dollars makes them reasonably inexpensive and i'm always just I hate the thought of them sagging or or um my card go sagging or um getting squashed in the envelope all right i'm gonna do it this way or this way i might do it this way okay so i'll put some on the back here some on the back here you don't need a lot to make a card and you don't even need a lot of inspiration really this was a spur of the moment thing that i had not thought i was going to do all right so we will take the backings off i just use my thumbnail um you can use a pokey tool you can use a pin you could use the point of your scissors my thumbnail works just as well to get that off now i'm going to do it on the diagonal just just because i can add a bit of interest there we go oh there's one more thing let's try this get my ink pad again i'm going to ink the edge of this square so i'm going to do that just makes it just gives it a bit more depth i should have done the circle too if i'd been thinking about it can't really see it just gives a bit of depth or shadow or something to it there we go off the backings of these little critters now i will warn you these little backings go everywhere so if i'm doing a few i will have a container next to me there we go pop that in And let's just finish off the inside with, I might make this a bit narrower. It doesn't need to be quite so long. So let's cut that strip in half, make it a centimetre wide. Move that. That's the right way. Line it up on my cutting thing. There we go that will look a bit yep glue i use a bit of glue bit of glue on that you really really do not need much Just make sure i'm putting it on the right side and is that the right way up if you've got a direction on your paper always check that you've got it the right way up Again, it's going to be a bit longer, so I'm just going to stick it to the bottom of the card and trim off that bit. There we go. Yeah. Card done. Card done. Easy peasy. Now, there's a strip here. There's a bit here. These can be used to decorate the envelope. You can decorate the flap of the envelope if you want to. And then just trim it off. So all I do is you can see how I just pop that over. I'll open it out and you can see it. It's so much easier. Move the rubbish like so. Now what I do, what I like to do is just trace around it so I know where to put the glue. Not so I know where to cut so much as so where I know where to put the glue in here. And we will take that and I'll just follow that line. Now remember it's liquid glue so it will squish. You don't need to go right to the edge and then we just line up envelope flap make sure it's straight when you use liquid glue you've got a bit of wriggle room so you have time 
him it off. There we got it. Push it down. Let's not waste anything, hey? Let's use it all. If we can use all the paper, I'm always happy. This makes everything look finished a little nicer. There we go. Trim it off. Right. Okay. Envelope done. Card done. And decorated. Car head upside down. Card done and decorated inside. Ready for sentiment or writing. Now a little hint. If you aren't sure what to write in your card, you don't um, or you just want to write dear Joe, um, happy birthday, love care, then put a huge sentiment or a bigger sentiment in the middle of the card and leave just enough room to write dear joe happy birthday of cat if you want to write a more a bigger message put your sentiment closer to the top closer to the fold line so that you've got more space down here to write your message some people you know you can write a lot some people you can't anyway card making on a budget you don't need a lot of um a lot of fancy equipment to start you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars to buy brand name things one thing i didn't show you is to and now i've lost it clean your stamp oh, i have it here it is here clean your stamp after you've used your stamp baby wipes I use baby wipes. Always clean your stamp after you've used it. Some inks will stain. Reds are notorious for staining. Um, but always clean your stamp after you've used it. Just so that if you do end up with lots of coloured inks, stamp pads, the colour won't transfer. Just give it a wipe. Give it a wipe. And there you go. Alrighty. There you go, card making on a budget. You can do it. If I can do it, if I can do it, you can do it. Now, I've got your crooked note, almost straight. It doesn't cost a lot to get set up to be able to make cards. A pack of 25 is $3.25. $0.13 for a card and an envelope. Throw in maybe $0.50 cents for your papers your embellishments and whatever and that's a, a 63 cent card and envelope so that's even cheaper than the two dollar shop you can't get much cheaper than that if i was making it just making it here on my own it'd be done in two or three minutes because so especially something simple like this strips on the card and away it goes it's really easy to do doesn't take a lot of time and you don't really need to measure a lot with these you just cut the strips till they don't you might like narrower strips on the top and bottom and a wider strip in the middle whatever doesn't really matter and you can use the papers that you have wrapping paper pictures from magazines um, contact makes great um, decorations for cards use what you have newspaper old music sheets um, book pages dictionary pages can all be used especially to make this style of card because it's so simple you want um, you want to keep it simple you don't want to overwhelm it anyway you could probably get set up with a cutting mat and a ruler, paper trimmer, a pair of scissors, a pencil, a bone folder, um, some 
adhesive tape, double-sided tape or a tape runner or whatever for between $25 and $30. But once you've got those things, other than your consumables like your double-sided tape, you've got them forever. They're not going to um, be used up. They're not going to disappear on you. So it's a one-off investment that will pay for itself over and over and over again. It's well worth doing. But do keep your eye open if you are um, really interested in card making. I'll have more videos coming up where I'll actually show you how to make some cards. But look for the quality products too, but go secondhand, go use. Keep an eye out for the sales and things and you can't go wrong. If you've made it this far, let me know by putting cactus in the comments so that I know you've watched right to the end. And thank you for doing that for me. It really helps me with planning, but it also helps our channel be found more easily on YouTube because there are billions of, of videos of channels on YouTube and we're just one. And of course, if it's easy for us to find, easy for people to find us, it's you know easy for us to let them know that you can live life debt free, cashed up and laughing all the time. Not just in good times, but even in 2022 when things don't look so good. Okay, if you're not already subscribed, click the subscribe button too. That helps as well, you and me. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I'll be back very soon with another video. Have a great day, everyone. Lost my doofy. Here we go. Bye.